Today, I'm going to look at one of those really weird programming languages that feels a bit like a cult. You know the things, they're awkward to use, they've got very niche applications, and they take so long to learn that there's a bit of sunken cost fallacy going on that ensures people keep using them when there's even better options out there. Oh, and they tend to have fairly loyal and vocal fan bases. If you never hear from me again, it's because the greybeards that use the fourth programming language have found me. Yes, we're looking at that language, the weird one that uses RPN and stacks. Fourth. So there's a few styles of programming languages out there. The majority are procedural. You write your code in a sequential order and the computer dutifully chews through your instructions one at a time in the order that you wrote them. Well, okay, on modern machines it might execute things out of order or skip entire sections of code, but that's modern CPUs for you. Along with exciting new exploits and bugs, out of order execution and branch prediction makes our computers super quick. But back in the mists of time, somewhere around the 70s, computers were far from quick. We discovered that last time when we were using BASIC. BASIC is still procedural though, and that style of programming is very easy to learn. Humans naturally think in procedures. It's pretty much the way things are done now. BASIC, C, Python, raw assembly, it's all procedural. There are alternatives though, usually invented by curious academic types that have a particular application, or a particular thing that they want to try and achieve. One such person is Chuck Moore, who in the late 60s, while working for the US National Radio Astronomy Observatory, invented the fourth programming language to help control radio telescopes. Like you do. I discovered he has a website. It's not been updated for 10 years, but at the time it would have put him to be about something like 75 years old. I hope that when I'm that old, I'm still doing stuff like this that's technical with computers. I mean, I told my mortgage lender I'd still be working at that age, so yeah like, share, subscribe and all that nonsense and maybe I won't have to. I initially went into this trying to figure out what fourth was all about, but along the way I found something much more interesting. Look, it's hard to explain, just let me try, sit tight because this isn't the history of fourth video. We're off on some weird journey that started when I tried to figure out why people use this language at all. It all comes down to these things called stacks. Computer scientists love stacks, they conveniently solve a lot of complex issues in a very elegant way. Just look at the undo feature in any piece of software. It needs to somehow remember what you did and then let you go back in time as it were. How does it do this? Well, it uses a stack. You see, every action that you do in a program, the state of the program or some way to undo that action is just put on a stack one after the other. When you click undo, it just pops off the top item from the stack and goes back to what was there before. It's the same in programming. Every function call gets a return address pushed onto a stack. So when the function returns, the CPU knows where to go back to. Stacks are almost magical in their simplicity and power. This is not a video on stacks either. Go Google how they work. There's hours and hours of people explaining them. The world doesn't need any more videos like that. However, here's the short version. A stack has a top, a bottom, and a size. They use something called last in, first out. So you push data into the stack and then you pop off the top item. You might be able to get other items, but that's kind of cheating. Stacks allow computers to process mass accurately if you use something called reverse polish notation. I made a video about it. Go watch it after this one if you want. RPN is clever and quite powerful, but you need to think differently and not in the turtle necked Apple way. Although, Open firmware on 90s era Macs and Sun machines used fourth. The expansion cards for those machines could come with drivers in ROM on the card that told the machine how to use the card. RPN uses the stack to do maths. It completely eliminates ambiguity in the calculations and it removes the need to use brackets. And this is maybe your first hint that fourth is a little bit wacky. It uses both stacks and RPN and it requires a human to keep track of the program's state while they're programming it and using it. So let's do a bit of fourth programming to see what it's like. We'll tackle this in the same way most people do. There's a website and a book. The book appears to be a bit like the equivalent of the KNRC book in that everyone programming fourth has read it and has probably got a copy. You know you're into esoteric language territory when the book resorts to elaborate anecdotes to get across the core concepts. I mean, look, it's talking about washing machines or writing letters. I've got to say though, whilst making this video, this book is awesome, look all these little pictures inside it. 
Modern programming books are far too boring. Websites are even worse. It's just text often shoved in a GitHub repository for you to read. Let's bring back nice looking textbooks that were worth reading and maybe worth keeping. But anyway, I want some context. Where's like, hello world? I need some better documentation. This is, feels a bit like those old Learn C in 21 Days books that spend six inches of paper telling you what computers are and what programming is, rather than the thing you want to know. Where is fourth for people who know C? So the fourth I'm using is for the Aegon Lite, which is a tiny Z80 based computer that normally runs BBC Basic. I think this has become my new favourite small computer. It's Z80 based, thinks it's a BBC Micro, and the CPU supports 24-bit addressing, so I'm not trapped in 64K anymore. This sounds like my kind of thing. Anyway, fourth, back to that. The instructions for Aegon 4th start off with some basic maths. Currently this seems a bit like I'm supposed to be amazed that my computer can be a calculator. I'm noticing the weird way 4th writes its output. It like sticks it on the same line just after yours, rather than on the line below. You know, I told you this was a bit weird. We'll come back to programming in a bit. Let's put this into some context. Looking at Forth from a 2020s perspective is wrong. It's like judging 90s humour through today's eyes and being offended at the jokes. So Forth was invented in the 1960s as a way to control telescopes. The internet claims it's now popular for using in embedded systems and real-time devices. This is why it's so alien to modern programmers. And by modern, I mean people who learnt programming in the 80s like we did. Back then, computers weren't normal things. Barely anyone had one of their own. Computers were sci-fi props on TV to most people. Also, there was no normal design. No one computer worked to look like another. They were all different. People using these early computers were highly skilled scientists and academics, not Bob the office worker who wanted to do some word processing. He'd still be using a typewriter for that. Having to think in RPN and remember the state of a stack in a program would have been minor inconvenience to this kind of person. Scientific calculators used RPN. It was how the world did complex maths. The alternative to this was using BASIC or trying to hand assemble machine code on squared paper like I mentioned in my previous video. So a programming language that forced the programmer to get on the machine's level by putting data into it in a format that was easy to work with would have been completely reasonable. You see, BASIC was crusty and slow, and everyone knew it. But here was fourth, a language and an operating system, because yes, it's an operating system too, that could run on these slow CPUs at a decent rate, almost as quickly as assembly did. One of the big claims about fourth is how it allows the programmer to more accurately and quickly control the computer. It achieves this by being both an interpreted and a compiled language at the same time. In the fourth world, each thing it knows is called a word. Words are defined in a specific way. So here we are defining a word called show numbers, which contains a loop to print the numbers 0 to 19. Remember, this is a stack. So 20 goes on the stack, 0 goes on the stack, then the do instruction pops those off to use internally. That random full stop in the middle, that just means print. Once we've typed this in, Forth will actually, as best as I understand, convert that into either machine code or something very close to it and put the address of that code into what's called a dictionary. It's a dictionary of words. If we make a mistake, we can't go back and edit the code. We have to redefine that word. So programming in Forth is both a sort of interpreted and a compiled way of writing code. You don't know that's happening behind the scenes. It's not a choice you make. As you type the code in, it just gets converted into machine code and stored in memory somewhere. Then there's just this giant table it calls a dictionary, which has like, it's just a big jump table to where the code is. So as the code is running, it's just jumping around memory, executing other pieces of code. That's why it's so quick. If you type fourth code in at the command line without defining words, like we were doing earlier with the maths, it just interprets it as it runs. To see just how much quicker this makes the computer, here's a basic program that finds prime numbers. Don't look too hard at the code, it's a bit mad. And as you can see, it's so slow, I've had to speed the recording up, it takes about three minutes to do this. The code is quite hard to understand because whoever wrote it used every trick BBC Basic has in order to speed up parsing and interpretation. 
This is a thing with BASIC. If you write long things, it takes longer to interpret than short things. The actual length of variables seems to matter. Now here's the same program running in fourth. It's a bit quicker. Well, it's a lot quicker. Seeing this massive speed increase, I can completely understand why people were so eager to get fourth running on everything. Sometime in 2014 or 2015, when I was kind of getting more interested in retro computers and all that kind of thing, I discovered and bought a tiny DIY computer kit called a Fignition. It was a complete computer with a PS2 keyboard, composite video, and it ran fourth. Also, the main processor was an Atmel 80 Mega 328 or 168 microcontroller. You know, the chip that they stuff in Arduinos and sell on the internet for like 50p. It's got 8K of RAM, and in that 8K, there was a complete fourth system running. And it ran it at a good speed. And last video, I was going on about how hard it is to squeeze BASIC into 64K. They managed to squeeze fourth into 8K with enough space to actually use the machine. Then there was the barely heard of British computer called the Jupiter Ace that had a 3.5 megahertz Z80 inside it that chose to run forth instead of BASIC and it crashed and burned because Sinclair came out and people discovered that BASIC is easier to use than forth. So forth is clearly quite a powerful environment to put on a computer that's got limited processing capabilities. It's also Turing complete which BASIC isn't which means you can write more complicated code, you can create other languages using it. And I want to come back to that topic in another video and explore that. I can appreciate why 4th existed back then, why it might be good for an embedded system back when CPUs were expensive and slow. But today I can't figure it out. I built a VGA terminal for my RC2014 and the heart of that is a Raspberry Pi RP2040 microcontroller that cost me 5 quid. And that can bit bang VGA and still have enough processing power to be a serial terminal. And this is where there's a lot of conflict in my head about 4th and what the point of it is. I'm sure it's been used still, but I can't for the life of me understand why. Beyond maybe historical usage, and why change something that doesn't need changing. I can't understand though why anyone would choose to use it today, and I'm not sure if they do. Although I hope this assumption is wrong, and there's a whole subculture of fourth programmers keeping some vital systems running that we all depend on. That's maybe something to think about too. Progress is generally good. Finding better ways to solve problems ultimately helps everyone. I like my washing machine. It stops doing the washing from becoming an all-day chore. But some things aren't broken and don't need fixing. Sections of the banking world really are running on ancient COBOL code, running on emulated mainframes because the hardware stopped working decades ago. But it still works, so they don't change it. Today we have a lot of things where we just change stuff for the sake of it usually just to justify some sort of subscription payment now. So there we go, a look at a very obscure and difficult programming language. I'm still none the wiser whether it's actually used anymore, but it was interesting trying to use it and having a bit of a play. Talking about obsolete and complex systems is kind of my thing though, so it's about right for my channel. Did you see that wonderfully cursed looking BBC Basic earlier? Halloween's coming up soon and I've, that gave me an idea for a fun programming style video. So if you're not subscribed, but you've seen a few of my videos, you're probably safe to subscribe. This is what I do here. And I'll see you in the next one. Just wait for all the noises that are distracting me to stop. I know you can't hear them, but they really distract me. Currently there's an aeroplane and something tapping just here. Oh, this is in the picture, isn't it? For fuck's sake. Wait a minute. Rearranging bits of furniture. Random big bits of stuff. Don't know what I'm doing with this. Find something useful. Right then, we'll record a minute 47 of nonsense. <laughs>